I got something I think you're really gonna like. Three player Super Bowl rings from the greatest dynasty to play football, the Sanford. Before we get started with our video, go ahead and smash that red subscribe button so you can catch up on more videos like this one in the future. Hey there guys, what's up and welcome back to our channel. It would leave you astounded once it would be revealed how much the old man's impact was on Rick Harrison, the American businessman, reality TV personality, and co-owner of the gold and silver pawn shop, is a professional when it comes to buying and collecting priceless items for sure. The heavy influence of it is revealed in the pawn shop content and 10 things Rick Harrison inherited from the old man are dug into in the following ways. First off, Super Bowl Ring. The occurrence of such alarming events happen more often than one thinks it might. Rick Harrison owns a 2001 New England Patriots Super Bowl ring that used to belong to Brock Williams, something the champions wear, and not a random dealer, but Rick Harrison is not a mediocre dealer. He knows his way around and has left people amazed. When top-notch players of famous leagues fall into a financial crisis, they tend to sell their stuff. Former defensive back for New England Patriots Brock Williams, so when the situation got worse, the man decided to let go of his Super Bowl ring from 2001. Two carat diamond strutted 14 carat gold rings? He must be going through a lot. He was not keen enough and sold it only for $2,500 when 15 grand was the minimum one should have taken to part ways with it. Rick himself claimed that he would never give the ring away with its unique and wicked shape and history for less than a hundred grand. Yeah, I grew up being a Chargers fan. Uh, <laughs> definitely, I apologize. BMW 18. No one could have imagined Rick Harrison owning a BMW 18, the drool-worthy vehicle that has awed so many before with its handsome skeleton and flawless functioning, something that's irresistible and eye-catching as well, that even may have jumped out of a science fiction movie. It costs about 165,000 US dollars, such a high price that relates to its beauty and working. Its lightweight due to the use of carbon and aluminum is alluring, not to mention a top speed of 250 kilometers an hour, reaching from 0 to 60 in just under 4 seconds. Everything taken into notice, Rick was quick on his feet to buy the car. No one knew how and owned the car everyone was ready to sell both their kidneys for. I'm Rick Harrison and this is my pawn shop. Pawn Plaza. It was all over the news, didn't you hear? The pawn shop sits in downtown Las Vegas, home of the business folks. The amazing and radiant shop would soon be opposite to its spoiled little brother, Pawn Plaza. Rick's investment was a bit greedy, not thinking through even to the point of not thinking through, which doesn't bode well with his famous and witty deals that he pulls every now and then on his reality TV show that's filmed on the gold and silver pawn shop, something he was the heir of after the death of his father. The plan started in 2015 and the building commenced, costing Rick Harrison about $2 million for the plaza to wrap up. In the beginning, many people opened their shops in the plaza, but as of 2018, five of them have left because of the lack of customers and whatnot. This meant things were not working out. However, not moments later, the plaza regained its potential when new tenants signed up for business, and even though the plaza is not that big a deal, at least Rick knows it was not that bad of an investment after all. Rick's Picks Every item that he buys holds great value, if not flair. He collects centuries-old Japanese art pieces, legendary and immensely appealing guitars, antique daggers, old but meaningful swords that look good in a posh house, etc. Yet Rick doesn't settle for how much the object costs, and he's also intrigued by the history of every object, and whichever item he loves best goes to Rick's picks. That displays every single one of them he's emotionally attached to, and according to him, provide a deeper and more educational take on its rusty past. 
Therefore, for every object that he puts up in his shop, there's a little information plate that tells everything one should know about said item. Not only is this convenient, but Rick also thinks it's a great way to indicate that the pawn shop is not only about money and deals. It's definitely cool, Bob. The Alfred Champion Spark Plug Company. Guitar Collection. It's common knowledge that Rick has a guitar fetish. As an owner of the gold and silver pawn shop, Rick comes across several of these beauties, the acoustic guitars, the rock and roll electrical types, maybe a ukulele or two. Owned by well-known artists of the mid-20th century, the rare guitars are either rejected by Rick or taken away to be displayed on his collection podium. He hasn't shied away from the fact that he's a whole fanatic for the Gibson Guitars, an American manufacturer of guitars that was founded in 1902. Rick would try very hard to get his hands on an ancient Gibson guitar that has seen firsthand the American music industry from its beginning. One such example is how he bought a Gibson guitar for $85,000, which was once owned by the then-famous Stephen Stills, the metal lord of his age. It's not the first time Rick has pulled something like that for fun. The most beautiful acoustic guitar you have ever seen. Porsche Panamera. The stylish, sporty car was undoubtedly a rather daring purchase by Rick back in 2013. The out-of-the-world model was the epitome of success, and Rick seized his chance because, well, his net worth of $8 million couldn't have stopped him. Dodge Power Wagon Who would ever want to buy a noisy truck? Rick would, apparently. It's not only an ancient truck, however, and Rick was smart enough to see through that. It was inspired by the World War II vehicles and is the first ever 4x4 truck stocked for consumers that love the bulky structure and the history it holds. To this day, it costs more than $60,000, something Rick is obviously proud of. The mid-40s Dodge Power Wagon, these were fantastic vehicles. They built them from about... Classic cars and bike collection. Rick must be grateful for the love and fame he's gotten. The fondness he has for muscle cars and classic Harley bikes is not concealed. With the money and opportunities he has, he's often buying and hoarding cars and bikes on his reality TV show, making deals and drooling over the bulging amount of antiques he loves to pile up in his humongous garage. Specifically to go on long distance rides, I mean, this bike you could hop on. Ford Roadster our guy Rick has already spent above a million dollars on cars alone, but this wouldn't have stopped him from buying the ancient car that brought back the twinkle in his eyes. The custom jet black Ford Roadster was an automobile back in 1932, originally worth more than $400 in its time. So definitely a lot. This catch was one of the things that defined Rick as being the talented man he is when it comes to etching and dealing with great items. Is it a factory steel body or aftermarket steel body? Aftermarket. Gold and silver pawn shop. Yes indeedy, the greatest investment Rick could ever pull off was buying the pawn shop itself, along with the license that's needed to be able to build the bases of a pawn shop, which cost a lot of digits. It's not just the customers who make this place so inevitably priceless, but the royalties from sponsorships from the History Channel and the sheer fact that it is filmed for the TV show are a few more treasured things that Rick was so ingenious and fortunate to buy. That route wraps up this video which we hope you guys found delightful. Do shout out your favorite moments in the comments down below while also smashing that like button and also giving us a subscribe so you can catch